Hello everyone, it's your Sally Coach, and today we'll be going over how to solve the cryptanalysis checkerboard cipher. This will be on every single one of your tests as a special bonus question, so please watch the entire video so that you know how to get those easy 250 points. With that said, let's get started. Alright, so this says, you found the following carved into the bark of a hollow log. You were told that it's a quote by John Hughes and coded as a checkerboard. The 35th through the 41st cipher units decode to be focused on. What does it say? So let me go look for these. It says it right here, and I can fill it in as focus on. F-U-C, I mean F-O-C-U-S-O-N. All right, next, you would think that since, oh, we have A-A going to O or like XL going to C, let me fill it in in all the spots that I see it. But this is actually wrong. You don't want to do this just yet. Because if we go and look at the keywords, I'm not exactly sure yet, but what if there's a double letter, you know? What if O could be in two different spots in that keyword, like in the row keyword or the column keyword? Then that could cause a problem in the future to where it could be O or maybe a different letter. Just like seen in my old or in my other checkerboard uh, cipher video, I saw that there was a difference between S and P because of the two letter O's within my keyword. So it's important that we start filling in once we are sure that there are no repetitions of letters within that keyword. So let me look at the start of our letters, like in this uh, text, and see all the unique letters that we have. So we see that we have like an A, we, we have an S, um, A, S, X, A, S, X. Um, we also have a, let me see, O over here. So we can also add an O to that. And is that all? Or do we have one more remaining? Yes, we have one right here, an N. Right here. This looks like I can decode it to be Saxon. So now that I did the first letters, this decodes to be the rows. So I can put an S, A, X, O, N. And now I can do the same thing for the columns. So I can keep looking. I can see that I have... Um, what do I have here? I have an A, a T, an H, um, an L, and a C. So, A, T, H, L, C. This looks like it could be like, uh, what can it be? Like, Thalc, maybe like, Latch could work. What are some other ones that could possibly work? I believe this is all. So, I can put in Latch as my guess and see how we do from there. And now I can look, I can fill in these letters that we have from focus on once we have these keywords. So let me look, X, T goes to F. So X, T, right? So that's where F is gonna be, right there in the middle. X, T is F. Next up I can do A, A, which is O. I have X, L, which is going to be C. I have O, H, which is going to be U. And then I have a C, which is going to equal S. And then I have a A, which is O again. And then a T, which is N. All right, so right here, I can see that we have the letter U. So this can help me finish out the rest of it by putting in V, W, X, Y, and Z. So I can easily put that in. And now after finding the keywords, I can see that there are no rep repetitive letters in either one. So I can say that all of these letters that I already have, as well as these new ones that I just found out right here, I can plug into the text. So now I'm gonna plug in all of the ones that I already know into the text. All right, so now that I filled in everything, we can now start looking our, at our Clibius table and see if we can find any more letters. So we can see over here that we probably have a keyword that's about just this length and maybe over here. Because we can see that it starts out with C and then F right here. So we can tell that the alphabet probably ends just about here. So I have a strong feeling that this is probably going to be D or E since we those are the only two letters in between C and F. C, D, E, F. So one of these must be in the keyword. And since E has so much higher of a frequency, I would say that E is going to be the one that's going to be in the keyword, right? So I can put in D over C here and see where it would go. So if I put in X, A to D, I would have it only pop up in one area, and that's right 
here. So that makes sense. If it was E and it would end only right here, we can't have only just one E in this entire group of text. That would be very, very um, unlikely, right? So I, have, I can just say that this is going to be D. So now, now that I know that um, inside my keyword, right, there has to be an E somewhere. Next up, I can probably say that this is going to be A or B, since that's going to be the end of the keyword. And I'm just not sure which one I want to put over there right now, since um, AH doesn't pop up that many places within the text. So um, I can't really do anything about that. Um, next up, I'd say that we should look at the amount of letters that are remaining over here and see if we can find anything from that. So we have uh, F, G, H, I, J, and then K, L, M, and then N and O are both in the keyword. P, Q, R, and then S is in the keyword. And then we have T. So this is, Q is a pretty high frequency that is going to be out of the keyword. Same with letters like maybe P and M. So we can just think about having those out to the side just to remember about. Um, but we can't really make any big assumptions through that just yet. So now what we have to do is look into the text. Is there any words that we can find? Is there any patterns? Is there anything that we can do? We can say like maybe at the start, it might have one, right? That might be a thing. So we can try just thinking if SA was one and it was right here. So I would have E being SA. I can put in all the different areas where E is. So I would have E over here. I would have E over here. Where else would I have it? Um, I would have it right here. Um, and then um, I would have another one right there. And then I would have a few right here. This makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Because I have such a high frequency, so it does help me out with this. Another thing that I see right here is that I forgot to fill in the letter W to NA, but it's supposed to go right here. So now we have the word we focus on, which makes sense. So now that I know that E goes over there, I can have a little bit less letters to worry about within my keyword. Now I can keep going with this. Maybe like SH could be T. That's one like one uh, you know letter that could work. So I, this is what just cryptanalysis is usually about. You have to keep on going. You have to keep on trying different letters. If it doesn't work, try again, again, and again. So now I can try putting SH to T. Let's see how this works. SH goes to T. Let's see if I can fill it in anywhere. SH goes over there. T, T. What else? Does it pop up? Um, yeah, there's many, many places where it pops up. Yeah, that should be all the areas that it comes up to. Um, maybe we can have the word that over here, like T H A T especially since it says that we focus on. So that could be pretty important. Or we can see that it says like we focus on the, which could work. So I would have a really high chance of XH being T. I mean, XH being H. So we can at least try that. XH going to H, which does make sense. Now I have C, D, F and then G or H, um, G or I, J. So those are the two choices we have now. And then we have H. So this really marks down the spot for that one letter remaining. So I can have X, H to, um, to H now. Uh, where else does it pop up? Yeah, I have a really high feeling now that SC is going to become A because I have that over here. I have hand at the end. I have that again right here. So it does really work out having SC to A and SH to H. So I can put in SC to A over here as well. So all there is where now I have SC, I'm going to put in A. Ooh, that doesn't make as much sense though. T and then AN and then T. I'm not sure. I can look at that later on. So SC going to A. Um, and one last right here. Okay, yeah, that should be it. 
as c goes to a. So now I see that I have a, so now I automatically know that ah is going to go to b. I don't think that helps though because it's not anywhere in the text. Um, now I can just keep on going and try finding more words. So I have that we focus on the, huh? Oh, SC is going to be A T A S K T A S K. So O L is now going to become K. Task that is A L now becoming I. Uh, so I can put in A L to I. Well, I J really. Um. So AL going to I over here as well. AL to I. I, I. Uh, what else? I believe one more right here. Yeah. So one thing that works. So AT is going to become N, just like before. And then XC is going to become G. Yeah, XC is going to become G. And then now I have SC going to A. One thing at a time, so now I have OA going to M, um, SH, what does that say? So one thing at a time, it, yeah, it is, oh, this is a really hard word to get, important, right there, important, so now I have o, uh, OT to P. O T to P, and then I have S L to R. So important that we focus on the task that is at P R present, and then A T is N. Perfect. So now that it says one thing at a time, it is important that we focus on the task that is present at hand. And then a Polybius keyword came out to be um relations i believe yeah relations and then p q over here so i have relations as my keyword and then the quote being that yeah so i'd say that that's the main strategy for going um for a cryptanalysis checkerboard where at first you look for these keywords and then using those keywords you can try finding out more words once you get that hint um, another thing about this is that you just need to really try and just go for it. Trying to find a lot of those common words that I saw at the start, like one, that was pretty big. Another one was finding out like these words, that's over here. That's another really big part about it. But yeah, being able to get that pad recognition fast. And I tried making this a little bit harder by giving myself that block size. So if you were to do this without a block size, maybe you would see it at like a regional or something, maybe an invitational, they would most likely have it without any sort of block. So it would be a little bit easier on you. But um, yeah, that is it for the cryptanalysis checkerboard. And if you do want to meet with me one on one about a specific site for events, use the Google appointments link down below. And if this did help, please make sure to subscribe, like and watch the rest of the videos in the series as it would be tremendously helpful for me. You can click on the left to check out more videos on my channel and you can click on the right to jump to the next video in the series. So thank you so much for watching and I hope you have an amazing rest of your day.